Hey guys, Wylock here, welcome back. A couple new easy techniques to show you this week and a simple portal piece that we're gonna make. I made a set of six of these as uh, Necron objective markers for Warhammer 40K, but you DMs out there can easily see how you could apply this and do something for your, for your tabletop scenery. So let's get to it. By the way, these were inspired by a vid I found on Bell of Lost Souls. I'll throw a card on the screen to that video. Really cool idea, figured I'd adapt the concept for what I was after. So start with a cereal box or a leftover model box, any kind of thin cardstock. Draw the shape of your portal and then cut it out. These cork sheets are about a quarter inch thick, should be easily available at any crafting store. You can easily break away bits from it. Try to get pieces that are around an inch long and maybe three eighths of an inch wide. And hot glue them around the perimeter of the cardstock to get a nice random stone look. Then do the same on the other side. You see I only occupy about an eighth inch or so of the cardstock to glue on the cork, so be sure to cut your initial shape a little bigger than you'd expect since we do need something to glue to. Then a nice base, again break away a random shape, and attach the portal to it with a nice healthy line of hot glue. Now you'll notice at this point that the whole thing is very flimsy and pretty fragile too, so plain old white PVA glue, gonna slather this all over the piece. Dip your brush in water to help the glue flow a little bit better, but uh, cover the entire thing and then set it aside to dry overnight. Should be rock solid the next day. So a full base coat of black, this is just cheap acrylic craft paint. And once that dries, very simple, gonna use a dark gray, a gray, and white, and dry brush them on in that order in decreasing amounts. So dominant with the dark gray, dry brush with the gray, and then just nick at the edges with the white. Now the portal surface itself, gonna start with dark green, probably need two coats if you're using cheap craft paint like I am here, and then a standard medium green. Using a fairly small brush for this, and notice how I'm applying it, horizontal strokes only, back and forth, and uh, not going all the way to the rocks, so there's a band of dark green surrounding this streak of the medium green. The direction of the strokes is important for the overall look, so don't try to smooth or blend those edges. Just leave them like this. Here's a bunch of them done up and drying. Then do that exact same thing with a lime green, except again, go a little bit smaller. And while you've got that lime color out, use a dry brush or flat brush of some kind and nick at the inner edges of the rock, as well as the bit of ground nearest the portal. This is intended to mimic a sort of glowing effect. And then with some yellow, paint a straight line down the middle. This one you do brush vertically, just a straight line. And now for the crystals. So this is leftover sprue from a Necron kit. I think it was a monolith, but it's a transparent green plastic. I'm gonna snip some segments ranging from five to 15 millimeters long. And then using Loctite Gel Control Super Glue and some needle nose pliers, gonna attach them to the base, basically in the portal so that they look like they're kinda pouring out. Uh, if you snip them from the sprue with your cutters at an angle, then you can achieve the slanted effect that you see in the finished pieces. All right, so let's get a look at these in context. I apologize, I'm fighting a bit of a cold right now, but the craft must go on. So anyway, I made six of them, and uh, the number of crystals indicates which marker it is, one through six. I don't like the numbers one through six appearing on the markers. I want them to be like part of the terrain. I want them to look nice. So that's why I did it this way. Just trying to figure ways that I could do that without the number. And if you're new to the channel and you like those giant crystals you see, uh, be sure to check out episode 83. A little bit of sandpaper helps to smooth out the tips of those crystals. But if you cut them with the with your flush cut snips at a bit of an angle, I found that it, it does a pretty good job without having to do that. At three feet away, you won't notice anyway. Again, I gotta thank Bell of Lost Souls. Really cool little idea there. For all you 3D printers out there, don't forget to check out Heroes Horde, where you can get true tiles models, as well as a ton of other excellent fantasy-related scenery. I am Wylock, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>